Well, during the last few days, few weeks rather, you know that the trees have been shedding their leaves and the whole place is covered with leaves and when there's rain, the whole thing is so messy. But our backyard has been cleaned, clean as ever. Mr. John Lewis and his son Pierce went and waited like Charlie Brown's from Charles Schultz until the last leaf dropped and the whole thing is clean and fresh. In fact, when I read Isaiah, I have that same feeling of cleanliness and freshness. And Mary Takash read it so beautifully, gave a sense of hope and joy, because that's what Isaiah gives us, a promise made by the Lord and a Lord who can keep the promise and therefore we live in hope. Our first reading from Isaiah has got two very, very rich pictures. The picture of the gifts of the Spirit, our confirmation, children know that only too well. The gift of wisdom and understanding. The gift of counsel and courage. The gift of knowledge and the fear of God. Now if you look at these, you may say, but aren't they the same gifts? I mean to say, isn't wisdom and understanding and knowledge one and the same thing? Yes and not exactly. Knowledge is gathering the facts and figures and details and data about things and places and events. I recently had to go to the doctor for a checkup and he said your cholesterol is too high and your sugar count is also very high. So I gave up red meat, I gave up desserts, I cut out sugar, I cut out salt and went confidently back to the doctor and found that the results were same. In fact, the cholesterol had gone up and I said, what's wrong? I had the knowledge, but I did not have the understanding. So I went to a dietitian, Miss Benedicto, and she began to tell me, there are certain fats that are needed for your body, and how starch changes into sugar, and how all these other things, you just have to cut down on the amounts rather than get rid of them altogether because you'll do some harm and damage to your body. Now that I have the knowledge and the understanding of that knowledge, hopefully I'll have the wisdom to follow through and be able to get these things in place. And the same thing applies to our spiritual life as well. The sad thing is that when I go into schools and when I question our young men and women, they are so ignorant of so many things of our faith itself. I went to school and since we are approaching the Christmas season, I talked to them about the Annunciation, I talked to them about the Visitation. They knew about Mary and I said, what do you think Mary was doing when the angel appeared to her? I thought they would say she was cooking, she was, clo she was um, washing clothes, fetching water. Oh, said one of them, she was saying the rosary. Um, I said, I don't think so. And then afterwards I spoke to them about the visitation and I said, what do you think, who do you think Mary went to, to visit? And they weren't totally ignorant. I said something beginning with E. And they said, Ezra the prophet. I don't know where they get all these facts, but the ignorance is great among our children. At least they knew Ezra was a prophet. And when I spoke about Elizabeth, they hadn't a clue as to whom she was. And so we need to instruct our children and our, you know, the Loretta sisters, the CS, SSND, the CNDs, St. Joseph sisters, they did marvelous work. But now since they're not in school, it's up to us as parents and grandparents to instruct our children in the basics. Because if they don't have that knowledge, they can't have an understanding and they cannot have a wisdom. Now, God can short-circuit all this and give us wisdom as he did to Bernadette way back in 1858. The dog dogma of the Immaculate Conception had best been declared four years earlier. And without all the understanding of her faith, Bernadette could speak about it. And then there was Lucio and Jacinta and Francisco, very ignorant about the faith and yet they were given the knowledge of so many things and the wisdom to use it.
And then there was San Juan Diego in Guadalupe. He too, illiterate, and yet was given wisdom of the things of heaven. And that is why Jesus would say in the gospel, blessed are you, because if you are like little children, you will understand the wisdom of God, because God gives it directly to us. And unless we open our hearts, we will have eyes and not see, and ears and not hear. Grace does build on nature, and therefore you and I have to take the trouble to learn about our faith, to pick up books and read, to go on the internet and find out about the wonderful things that are being taught within our church. We can get encyclicals today which we would never get before on the internet. And having got that and walked in the path of the Lord, we will have those beautiful words that were read in the second part of Isaiah. A wolf will be the guest of the lamb. The panther will lie with the kid. Uh, the lion and uh, the calf will browse together, and a little child will lead them. The beautiful story of almost the Garden of Eden. Today we seem to be having the Garden of Gethsemane more and more because we do not take these steps to walk in the path of the Lord. Here is this beautiful season of Advent, and as we get into it, we go with a hope and a promise, a promise that the Savior will come and bring light once again to this world, and therefore we walk with hope, with our heads held high. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For the church called to see with the eyes of faith God's living presence in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord for leaders who seek to build a world of justice for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all of you who have written in and called in, asking for prayers for people who are undergoing surgery today, for people suffering from epilepsy, Alzheimer's, uh, ALS, and for people suffering from uh, cancer and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord for people who walk in darkness, loneliness, and despair in the season of joyful light, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our people of the First Nations and for our soldiers working in Afghanistan, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the season of Advent and for the hope of Jesus, the light of the world. We make this prayer through the same Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. My sisters, my brothers, let us pray that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Lord, we are nothing without you, as you sustain us with your mercy. Receive our prayers and offerings. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 